There are many, many, many possible questions that could show up on this exam, like all of the exams. Um, and that range makes it a little uh, daunting and uh, complicated to study for. Uh, but hopefully what we're going to do today is just do a, a quick little breeze across the top of a few different of these topics uh, and allow us to sort of see the kind of range and the kind of types of questions. And I'll talk a little bit about the, uh, the ways that uh, NCARB writes their questions and the sort of type of uh, questions that, uh, that come up on, uh, on this, like why they write them the way they do and kind of what the point of, uh, of the, the questions are so that we can really sort of jump into it. One of the things you mentioned, Mark, was uh, um, the code questions that show up, so not just detailing, not just loads, uh, but also a whole range of other possibilities, including uh, code questions. That's one that I was a little surprised by recently as I was going through a lot of the new documentation from NCARB. Uh, in the recent uh, materials that they've sent out, they uh, now focus much more on code questions. Not that it's a huge number of them, but that uh, just more than they had been focusing before. So things about IBC and like uh, load reductions for wind loads and um, th those kinds of topics. So that's something that we're not going to talk about today, really. But I would recommend uh, that probably doesn't show up as much on a lot of the guidebooks uh, as it will soon, because it's clearly a, a big focus on the NCARB uh, front. So given that, uh, I think we should just jump right in. All right, so the uh, little mini mock exam that we sent out uh, starts with uh, a fairly simple, straightforward uh, uh, statics question. And the question is, number one, uh, neglecting the weight of the beam, what are the values for both of the reactions of R1 and R2? So the key first thing to remember here, just remembering back to your uh, uh, early days, is um, the uh, idea that the sum of the forces equals zero. So the sum of the horizontal forces equals zero, uh, and the sum of the uh, vertical forces equals zero, and most importantly, probably, uh, is that the sum of the moments equals zeros. Uh, remember, a moment is a force times a diagram. Um, so, uh, Remembering that, um, we don't really have, on this particular example, any horizontal forces. So we're going to actually not, uh, uh, not worry about that, uh, that one right now. What we will start focus on, though, is on the vertical and the moments. All right. Once Mark's out of my way here. All right. Um, so uh, First thing we need to figure out is what are our loads uh, going vertically, um, in, in this sense, down, uh, so that we can then figure out what our loads are going vertically up. Uh, and the best way that we're going to do that is by actually figuring out what one of those loads is uh, by doing moments around one of the reaction points. We could actually do moments around either of them. Um, the main thing is we have to get rid of one of them. Uh, and the reason that we can get rid of one is because if moment is a force times a distance, if the distance is zero, it just goes away. And so that allows us to have only one uh, uh, variable that we don't know. So if we do it, say, around this point at R2, uh, that means the only one that will be left will be R1. And so we can do the calculation very simply and easily. Uh, so if the sum of the moments, so have to equal to zero for it to be uh, in equilibrium, i.e. it's not going to uh, fly away, uh, float off, or bury itself into the ground. So it's in equilibrium, we're assuming. Uh, so then we start to think about, all right, the sum of the moments around this point. The moments, again, are a force times a distance. So here's a force, the 2K. Uh, so the distance is 5 feet. I'm going to call that force, because it's going down, it's creating around this in a clockwise motion, I'm just going to call that a positive force. So that's going to be 2k times 5 feet. And then the next one I'm going to get to is going to be this 4k. And that's going the opposite way. So I'm going to call that a minus force. So that's going to be 4k times, again, 5 feet. And then the next force we have is this uh, uniform load. And that uniform load at uh, 200 pounds uh, per foot 
uh, per square foot, uh, is that we could deal with it as a uniform load, but it's, life is going to be just much, much easier if we translate that into a single point load. So that uh, 200 pounds uh, per square foot square foot is going to be, uh, for in terms of the linear foot of this uh, beam, is going to be 10 times that 200. Uh, so we get uh, a 2,000 pound load, uh, but that 2,000 pound load, everything else we're doing is in Ks, in kips, so we're actually going to switch that. Kips is 1,000 pounds, so that's going to become 2K. So then we have another one that, again, is going in the negative direction, going counterclockwise, and so we have two kip times, in this case is going to be uh, uh, five feet plus five feet plus the middle of this 10 foot, so another five, so that's going to be 15 feet. Uh, and then the last uh, force we have to deal with is then the R1. Uh, and so the R1 is going in, again, presumably the positive uh, direction. So I'm going to say plus R1 and its distance is going to be 20 feet away. Getting a little close to the edge there. Uh, so if we start to kind of do some quick uh, uh, things, that we're going to subtract R1 times 20 to both sides. Uh, so we get uh, minus R1 uh, times 20 uh, is 20 feet is equal to um, 10 kip feet uh, minus 20 kip feet uh, minus 30 kip feet. Uh, so that becomes minus R1 uh, times 20, uh, which is equal to uh, uh, minus, excuse me, sorry about that, minus 40 kip feet. Since they're both minus, we can make them both positives. So now it's plus on both sides. So R1 times 20 is equal to 40 kip feet. Uh, therefore, the R1 is equal to two kips. We've divided it by 20 feet, so that gets rid of the feet on the kip feet. So we have R1 is equal to two kips. So that means this reaction force here is two kips. Uh, obviously, if we just do a quick sum of the reactions, uh, we can also, using the uh, vertical forces, uh, we can say that if there's uh, uh, two kips coming down as part of this uh, uniform load, plus the four kips coming down in this point load, uh, and then another two kips over here, that's going to total to eight kips. And we happen to know that this R1, because we've just figured it out, is two kips going back up. That means the R2 must be six kips. So there you are sort of a long way around. It's actually pretty fast once you uh, start to do it uh, quickly uh, on your own. You don't have to necessarily try to line everything up. Uh, and that is a, a pretty likely kind of question. You won't get a huge number of these, but you'll probably get one or two uh, that sort of force you to kind of do some fairly simple statics just to kind of show that you can, you can manipulate these things quickly and easily. Mm -hmm.